10 and 4. Tigers got a busy week this week. Tonight at Parkersburg, and Friday night will be at Oak Hill. Saturday night, Huntington comes to town. The ball. Okay. Thank you. And at Parkersburg, where the Tigers, after the long trip up and the hearty evening meal, ready to go. I'm Glenn May, bidding you welcome to the ball game tonight. On alongside, we got Bob Graham and Ann Metter. And Bob busy writing down starting lineup. So first of all, we'll say good evening, Ann. How are you? And we'll say good evening, Glenn. How are you? And you've got a message to deliver. Yes, I do. Uh, Sean St. Clair's mother, Mike's mother, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff's mother, said to tell Sean that they say hello. They had a safe trip up. And to say hello to Sean because he tapes all of our broadcasts so that Jeff can hear what we had to say about him. Okay, also uh, up here we've got uh, Charlie Wright. He came up with a group of cheerleaders. And then uh, I think uh, Mrs. Atkins brought a group. And uh, Dream on Melissa is supposed to be listening in to make sure Charlie shows the line. What else we got? And Bob, welcome in, buddy. Well, thank you. And there's a couple of other uh, people that are here tonight. Mike Elmore, uh, of course, he's with the team most of the time. And he's here. And I would like to also say uh, hello to George Harmon and his family, who probably are listening to this ball game tonight back in Princeton. And also Randolph Belcher, Steve Bailey, and uh, some fellow from the Boosters Club by the name of John Robinson. John Robinson, I've heard that name. He and Bill Pilsen are the one who invented the fly pattern, aren't they? Yeah, Bill Pilsen and uh, John Robinson got the fly pattern. And I think somebody take a squatter to that one of these days and we'll cure that. <laughs> See, uh, Rod Rice, former baseball player for Princeton High School down here, he tells me he's going to Marietta College. And he came, made the drive down from Marietta to see his good buddy Jimmy Miller play tonight. Oh, very good. Of course, Marietta College, that's just a short hike across the river. Right, Marietta. he said he just came across the river this evening. It took him about 20 minutes to get here. You want to give us some JV scoring and Hey, okay, uh, bad night for the junior varsity tonight. Uh, Princeton lost 79-48. to 48. Uh, Scoring for Princeton, uh, Frank Dickens had six, Jeff Adams had six. Leading scorer was David Livingston with ten, Jim Posey five, JoJo Harrison two, T-Bone Smith had one, Curtis Graham three, Brian Lust five, Mike Ratliff scored two, uh, David Brooks scored three, and Philip Surface scored two. So, uh, bad night for the junior varsity. Uh, I'm sure the long trip probably had something to do with it. They started out the game slow, and uh, this is a pretty good haul up here. It's a good road, good trip, but but anytime you're on the road, we left Princeton about 15 till 12 and, and got up here, got settled in, got the fellas in to get dressed about 15 after 5, so that's a pretty good day. That's a long run. It's going to be a long run back. It sure is going to be a long run back. I'd say uh, I would estimate the game will probably be over around 10 o'clock by the time the fellas get dressed. I, I would not expect for those parents listening that we would be back in Princeton much before about 2 in the morning. I imagine that's right. By the way, and I do, do know where there's an all-night donut shop in Charleston. We may need to stop that all-night donut shop and for the drivers to get a cup of coffee to stay away from the rest of the road. That's Amy White's all-night donut shop, isn't it? That's Amy White's all-night donut shop. That's right. She runs Well, up. we hope that Amy is awake and ready to serve when we can do coffee. All right, we'll be back with some interesting free throw stats. First, let's pause for this message. And the Tigers back in the dressing room around with Coach Ralph Ball. And then, uh, just as we were breaking for the... National Anthem, you mentioned that we need to say hello to Amy Bowman. Of course, Amy provides so much information to us and helps us at home. And she has just undergone some wisdom teeth, tooth surgery, and we hope that she's feeling well. Right. Uh, and she's probably out at Athens while she's Peter's down Athens. No, no, not Amy, not Amy. That might be Sandy. Oh. Sandy may be down there watching them, but, but Amy, I'm sure, is sitting by that radio, and we hope that the swelling goes down quickly so she can be back out supporting the Tigers. Okay. And, uh, Bob, are you ready for some of those stats that you've got? Let me have my lineup back over here so I don't lose that. Okay. Nice well, we, uh, we were tied up for about a half hour on the turnpike coming down, and Glenn May kind of reared back in the front seat to figure something that we haven't figured so far this season, and that's now the 33 points against Bluefield uh, increased his average approximately a point a game. He's hit 74 of 99 foul shots for seven at a 75% clip. Jeff St. Clair, who has to be the most accurate foul shooter on the team today, has hit 44 of 51 for 86 percent. He's also averaging 8.2 points per game. Mike Eads is averaging 15.5 points per game, and he's hit 51 of 69 attempts from the foul line for 72 percent. Uh, Bill Harmon, and I'd like to say hello to George Harmon, 
and to Bill's little sister back in Princeton. Uh, Bill's averaging 5.5 points per game, and he's 5 of nine foul line for 55%. Stephon Murray is averaging 3.7 points per game. He's hit 18 of 31 from the foul line for 58%. John Hansparger, who I all season until Ann corrected me last week, thought was a junior, uh, has hit 8 of 12 foul shots for 75%. That was a, an easy one to figure, 8 for 12. And he's averaging 2.5 points per game. James DeWitt, the sophomore who started for the Princeton team, is averaging 12.9 points a game, almost 13 points a game, and 16 of uh, uh, <laughs> on, on hands part that's 66% instead of 75%. James DeWitt's averaging 67%. He's hit 16 of 24, and uh, that brings it up to a total of 221 out of 308, or the 72% is the same. Okay, we're just about ready for basketball. We're going to do the starting lineups, and while we're doing that, we've got time to pause for this message. As the Tigers have been introduced, starting for the Tigers tonight will be Jeff St. Clair, James DeWitt, Mike Eads, Jimmy Miller, and Stephon Murray. Now, Bill Harmon has a bandage on his... Uh Let's see which hand he has the bandage on. On his right hand. He, uh, yesterday in practice, he had that uh, thumb turned back, and we tried to tape it up before the game. And uh, he can't put much pressure on it. I don't know. He said it when he catches the basketball, even if it, it, it hurts that's, quite a bit. You know, that, that thumb is quite a tender spot. you got nerves down in there that... And everything you, you do, you bang your elbow. Everything you do, you bang your elbow. You don't realize how much you use your thumb. I can't even put my hand in my pocket without hurting my thumb if I score. I don't know whether he's going to be able to do that much with it tonight or not. Well, hopefully, it, and they'll probably need a little bit of his bulk. Now, Parkersburg is not real tall, but they're relatively husky. And they've got pretty good strength. They've got pretty good overall size. They don't have any little fellows, as Bob was mentioning earlier. And, of course, Parkersburg did uh, become the first team in West Virginia to knock off Logan this year. And I believe that game was played at Logan. It, it was, was at Logan. We're ready to go. The Tigers out there, they're wearing the road blues with the white piping. Parkersburg comes out wearing the home whites with the red and black trim, big red numerals. Now, this Jeff Eddy that plays quarterback for them looks to me like he's about 6'2 and, and maybe weighs close to 190, 195 pounds. They missed him in that program, I believe, at 6'4, but he doesn't look that tall. He's, he's a pretty good five fellow for a quarterback in high is. school ball. And we'll have Miller in the jump against Bill Jonas. And the tip control by the Tigers as East pulls it down. Looks, Alex finds St. Clair, gives the ball to Jeff, and Jeff will start the offense. Behind the back dribble, moves it to the left side, wing position to win. Ball overhead, they got Miller on the wheel, high post, spinning jump shot off the flange, so good. Rebound, fought for, pulled down by the Big Red. As Parkersburg comes out where the Jonas controls. Into the front court. From Sing Donaway as Donaway leaves it for Ralph Moore, and Moore will start the offense now. He works the point, goes to the top of the circle, to Eddie, left side wing. He'll fire from 21 feet off the iron, no good, rebound pulled down by Miller. As Jimmy clears it away, leads it out to Eads, Eads into the front court, left side, left hand dribble. Still on the move, takes it to the corner, works the baseline, puts the shot up, no good, rebound pulled down by Parkersburg. Coming down for it is Eakins. Eakins leaves it for Donaway. Donaway moves it to the front court for Parkersburg. Down the right side, moves it to the point position, brings it back to the right side. To Eddie on the wing right side. In the corner to Moore. Moore looking outside, gives it back outside to Donaway. Back to Moore. He looks at the bucket, trying to get Eddie open on the high post. Cannot. They give it back to Donaway at the high post. As Donaway on the dribble with it. Looking to the left side to Eddie. Eddie way out on the wing position right now. Looking. Can't get anybody open. Gives it back to Donaway to Moore. He'll fire from the side. The key hits off the iron. No good. Donaway follows his own shot. Goes in the lane. Fires. Good. Donaway. Tom Donaway. Check it. Round four. Round four. Gets the bucket for Parkersburg. And St. Clair brings it to the front court for Princeton. Against pressure by Donaway. He's on the far side. Is he double team now? Works his way to the corner. Still on the move. And we got an offensive foul on Mike Eads. That's number one on Mike. Team foul number one on the Tigers. It'll be out of bounds to the Big Reds. They'll have it on the baseline backcourt. Is Eddie inbounds it to Moore. Moore works it to the front court with a right hand dribble. Moore comes out across the center circle, top of the key with it. To the right side to Eddie, to Jonas on the wing, to Donaway in the corner. Donaway left hand dribble brings it back outside to Moore, top of the key to Eddie. To Eakins far side, we got a whistle underneath. A three second violation call on the Big Red. 
It'll be Tiger Ball baseline. DeWitt will inbound it. He brings it in to Jeff St. Clair, and Jeff brings it to the front court under pressure from Donaway. To DeWitt left side. Skips his way to the corner left side. They got ease on the high post. Searches in the lane. Works on four. Fades away. Puts the shot up. No good. Partially blocked. And Markenford comes out with it, but DeWitt intercepts the pass up court. Brings it back to the front court. He'll fire from 20 feet. Good. James DeWitt puts it in the net, and we got a tie ball game with 5.49 to play in the first quarter. Two all. Round four will bring it to the front court for Parkersburg. Still on the dribble with it. Top of the key. Starts it toward the lane to Eddie. Right side. Wing position. Cross court to Eakins. Eakins puts the shot up so good. We got Miller coming out with it for the Tigers. As Jim snatches it. Gives it out to St. Clair. Drives the lane. Puts it up and in. As he took it all the way. Put it on the glass. Jeff St. Clair puts it up and in for the Tigers. Four to two. Tigers up by two. As Moore works it back to the front court for Parkersburg. Still on the dribble with the top of the key. Takes the shot. And trying to get it to Eddie. Picked up finally by Donaway. Donaway gives it back to Moore. To Donaway on the right side. Firing from 18 feet. Good. Donaway, 18 feet out, puts it in. Four to four as St. Clair brings it to the front court. To Eads. Eads goes to the baseline. Gives it back outside to Jeff. Firing from the lane. No good. In and out. Rebound. Pulled down by the big red. Eakins controls. Up to Donaway. Into the front court. Goes to the baseline. Holds it up now. Outside with it to Moore. Back to Donaway in the corner. Drives the baseline. Miller goes after him. He gives it back outside to Eddie. Firing the free throw lane. No good. Rebound pulled down by Miller. Gets it to St. Clair. As Jeff goes to the front court to Eads. Firing out the corner. Good. Mike Eads bangs it in. Tigers up 6-4 to four now. As Moore will bring it to the front court for Parkersburg. Moore on the dribble with it. Looking to the right side. Goes to the top of the key. Now to the left side. Leaves it for Jonas over here. Jonas comes back cross court to Eakin. Eakin's looking underneath. Can't get anything open here. Gives it to Donaway far side. Firing from about 12 feet. No good. Rebound tips around and out of bounds. Off of Parkersburg. It'll be Tiger ball. Jeff Eddy and Jimmy Miller both had a hand on the ball. Eddy had a little bit more of it, so they called it out of bounds on him. Six to four. Tigers up at St. Clair. Working with the ball in the dribble and the backcourt. Moves it to the front court. To E. Deeds on the right side wing position. They go down low to Miller on the low post, firing good as Miller, a spinning, wheeling jump shot from nine feet away, puts it in the bottom of the net. Eight to four, Tigers up. As Ralph Moore brings it back to the front court for Parkersburg. Tigers into a 2-3 zone defense. As firing for Parkersburg is Jonas. He hits it from about 18 feet. Bill Jonas. Eight to six. Tigers lead as St. Clair works his way to the front court under pressure from Donaway. As Parkersburg in a man-to-man defense. And Donaway does run over Stephon Murray. No hustle on it. As the ball goes to Eads, goes into the lane, works his way down the lane, puts it up, no good. Rebound pulled down by Donaway of Parkersburg. Waits for traffic to clear. Comes to the front court with it on the far side to Eakin. Eakin in the corner. He goes to the low post to Jonas. He puts it up and in. Bill Jonas hits it for Parkersburg. And we've got a tie ball game at 8 all with 3-11 to play in the first quarter. St. Clair goes into the front court and Miller gives him a big. He drives, done it, and he has fouled. But Miller had a pick, and Jonas brought over Miller. Now, Jonas has done this twice with no call. And that foul call on Jonas, I believe it's caught on Ralph Moore. Number four. On Ralph Moore, okay. And that'll put St. Clair on the line to shoot one. The official talking to him, I think Jeff got hit in the nose as he drove the lane. Jeff said he was all right, so he'll shoot one now. That bucket was good, 10 to 8. And St. Clair fires, it's good. 11 to 8, Tigers up. And the Tigers will press as Stephon has the putting pressure on pass intercepted by the Witt. Gives it to Miller. Miller puts it up and in. The press turned it over and he'll press again. As Eddie trying to get it inbound. As the Witt goes after the ball. Can't get it. As Dalloway breaks it to the front court for Parkersburg now. St. Clair hits him off. He gives it to Eddie and Eddie gives it to Moore. Moore top of the key. As they set the offense now. Moore leaves it to the right side. To Tim Tedrick, who checked into the ballgame on the timeout. He gives it down the baseline to Bowles. To Jonas, back outside to Moore. Moore goes into the lane. Miller slots the shot away. St. Clair, check it. Eads picks it out. Goes to the front court with it. He'll put the shot up. Good. As Eads put the shot up, Donaway tried to get the charge. Falling away from him. Could not get it. And Parkersburg wants a timeout. 15-8. Tigers up with 2.23 to play. We'll be back with more right after this. And uh, now we've had several, a couple of picks set outside by the Tigers. Parkersburg's running into that pick and actually knocking right, the man around uh, and no call well, on that. Well, that one Jimmy set down there, I'm glad they didn't call anything because I believe the foul would have been on Jimmy. He had his back to the fella instead of setting the pick square with him. He had his back to the 
to the guy coming into him, and he even started to move as the guy came to him. And, and a pick is not a pick unless you're just standing completely still with those feet on the ground. And there was an earlier one uh, with right. uh, heads on it, I think, wasn't it? Right, I didn't see that one. Uh, but they are, uh, Parkersburg is playing physical ball, but All it's right. not. We're ready to go. It's four. Brings it to the front court for the big red. Top the key with it. Makes the shot. Gives it to the right side to Jonas. He'll give it back to Moore. Goes to the lane. He'll fire from 17 feet off the iron. No good. Rebound tipped outside to Moore. Parkersburg. Back to Jonas. Jonas right side. He gives it back outside and they'll start it all over again. The Tigers in that 2-3 zone. As Moore goes to the top of the key to Jonas. Right side of the key. Cross court with it to Eddie. Drives the baseline. Drops it into the lane. Two she comes and takes it. Patrick. Patrick puts it up and in for him. Cedric gets it for Parkersburg, 15 to 10, as St. Clair works it to the front court against the press. St. Clair goes down the left side, back to the way, gets it out to Eads. Eads holds it, waits for St. Clair to come around and hands it to him. They go to Miller on the high post. Miller holds it high overhead, drives toward the baseline, looks for help now, and trying to get it to Stephon. Stephon on the baseline, gets it back outside to Miller, to St. Clair, and they'll turn it all over again. St. Clair takes it toward the right side. Eads in the corner. Mike lifts up the bucket, gives it back to St. Clair, drives toward the lane, and we've got a traveling call. Coming into the ball game will be Brian Eddy, uh, Parker's first. So we'll have two Eddies in, Brian Eddy and Jeff Eddy. As Ralph Moore will bring it to the front court for Parker's first. He gives it to Jeff Eddy. Jeff Eddy playing the point guard right now, the big man out front. To the right side to Jonas. In the corner with it to Brian Eddy. Gives it back outside to Eddy and to Eddy back in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and now the Noah Moore on the far side. He'll fire. No good. Tipped up. No good. Rebound pulled out by Stephon Murray of the Tigers. Out to St. Clair. As Jeff moves it to the front court. Looks toward the bench for some instructions. Now they go to Miller on the high post. He is fouled from behind by Jeff Eddy. And that'll be number one on, on Jeff. Team foul number two on the Big Red. And it'll be Tiger Ball out of bounds, side court left side. Inbound pass from the whip to St. Clair. St. Clair will start the offense. Parkersburg into a 2-3 zone defense. And St. Clair, top of the key with it. To Eads in the corner. Going to the whip on the high post. Not loose. Picked up by St. Clair. Firing the free throw line. Good. As Jeff pounds it in from 15 feet out. 17-10. Tigers on top. As Ralph Moore will bring it back to the front court for Parkersburg. Leaves it for Jeff Eddy. Jeff on the dribble with it outside. A 2-3 zone by the Tigers. As Eddie way outside, gives it to Jonas, back to Eddie, some more on the far side, back to Eddie, top of the key with it. As he looks underneath, now the more in the corner, looking at him, he comes cross court to Brian Eddie, and Eddie gives it back to Jeff Eddie, as Jeff Eddie, top of the key, Jeff on the dribble with it for Parkersburg, turns it the other way, then brings it this way, now... Jonas comes out for the ball. The Moore firing out of the corner. No good. Rebound pulled out by Miller at the buzzer. As they were playing for the last shot, they got the shot but couldn't make it. So at the end of the first quarter, the Preston Tigers, 17, the Parkersburg Big Red, 10. We'll be back with more right after this. 17-10, Tigers up. Bob, what's it look like? Well, so far in the game, Jeff St. Clair has scored seven points, three baskets, and he's uh, made the only... Uh, free throw of the night. Miller has four, each four, and James with two for Prince. Uh, for Parkersburg, Bill Jonas has two buckets for four points. Sean Donaway scored two, Ralph Moore two, and Tim Tedrick for two, giving them five field goals as compared to eight for Prince. All right, we're ready to start the second half, and we will have Bill Jonas send the jump against Jimmy Miller. Jimmy moves in. We're waiting on Jonas. Jonas is in. We're waiting on the official. As the official moves in and the tip. Controlled by Parkersburg is pulling it in with Eddie. As Brian Eddy takes it to the front court left side, gives it back outside to Ralph Moore. He'll start the offense now. The Tigers move into that 2-3 zone. As Moore, top of the key with it, to the right side to Jeff Eddy. Jeff gives it to Brian Eddy, top of the key with it. Can't get the shot, gives it back to Moore. Moore goes to the corner far side. Now to Jeff Eddy, out of the wing position. Trying to get it to Jonas on the high post, taken away by Miller. As Miller hits the floor, he flips the ball out to Mike Eads, and Mike controls for the Tigers. Mike into the front court with it to the win. Drives the baseline. Puts it up so good. Rebound fought for on the floor. Picked up by Parkersburg. As Jeff Eddy controls. Gives it to Brian Eddy. To Ralph Moore. And Moore will bring it to the front court. As Moore comes to the top of the key. To the left side. To Brian Eddy. Holds it high overhead. Looking underneath. Now they come across court with it to Moore. Spins into the lane and fires. It's off the iron. No good. Rebound fought for and... James DeWitt got it for the Tigers, gives it out to St. Clair. Jeff on the run, into the front court. Waits for traffic to go by, they'll set the offense. 
As St. Clair, top of the key with it. Parkersburg in a man-to-man defense right now. As James will with the ball left side on the wing. Drives into the lane. Goes down the lane. Puts the shot up and in. It's good. He is fouled. Now, listen, the bucket is good. They got a foul on Brian Eddy, number 20. And the bucket was good. He'll shoot one. And that's foul number one on Brian Eddy. Team foul number three on the Big Red. And that will put James DeWitt on the free throw line for the Tigers to shoot one throw. 19-10, Tigers up by nine with 6.48 left to play in the first half. As DeWitt fires the free throw, it's good. 20-10, Tigers up by 10. As he'll press, and Brian Eddy gets the ball up to Tedrick. Tedrick moves it to the front court for Parkersburg now. Saddles his way up, waits for traffic to clear, and Robert Moore has the ball. He'll start the offense. Ralph Moore has more top of the key to the left side to Brian Eddy. Looks at the bucket, drops it underneath to Tedrick. Fires over to Witt, no good. Rebound pulled down by Murray of the Tigers. Up to St. Clair. St. Clair moving into the front court behind the back dribble. Clears it out, waits for traffic to go by, and he'll start the offense. St. Clair goes to the right side. Sees it for ease. He's on the wing position. To DeWitt on the high post, firing from 17 feet off the iron, no good. Stephon rebounds, puts it up and in. Stephon Murray for the Tigers. 22 to 10, Tigers up. With 6.08 to play in the first half as Ralph Moore brings it back to the front court for Parkersburg. To the top of the key, looks underneath. Moves it to the right side to Jeff Eddy, goes to the baseline. St. Clair plays the defense on him. Gives it over to Moore on the far side, firing good. Ralph Moore hits it from 14 feet. 22 to 12. Tigers enjoying a 10-point advantage as Jeff St. Clair brings it to the front court for Princeton. 2-3 zone for Parkersburg. To ease in the corner right side as Mike puts it on the floor, brings it back outside to St. Clair. They come to the near side to Stephon. Trying to get on the high post as a kick loose and out of bounds off of the foot of Ease. Coming into the ball game for Parkersburg will be Tiny Donaway. I don't know where he got the name Tiny. He looks big enough for me. He's not except you know, average size. He's not tiny. He's pretty hooked. As Ralph Moore brings it to the front court now for Parkersburg. Top of the key to the left side to Jeff Eddy. Jeff looks underneath, waits for somebody to move, gives it to Brian Eddy. Now to Ralph Moore, back to Eddy. Top of the key is Brian, firing from 20 feet. Good. Brian Eddy hits it from 20 feet. 22 to 14. Tigers up by eight. And Jeff St. Clair will bring it to the front court for Princeton. Top of the key with it. To the left side to the win. Holds it high overhead. Looks underneath, gives it back to St. Clair. To Miller on the wing right side. Back to St. Clair, and they come to Ease on the near side, firing good. Mike Ease from 18 feet puts it in the bottom of the net. 24 to 14. Tigers up by 10. As Ralph Moore works it to the front court for Parkersburg. Looks over to Coach to get some instructions. Now gives it to Brian Eddy. Brian Eddy on the wing position, cross court to Moore. Firing from outside, good. Ralph Moore from 20 feet hit it as they overshifted and went back to the weak side. 24 16. Tigers up. St. Clair to the front court with it for Princeton. To DeWitt. DeWitt's got a screen from Miller. He'll fire. Off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down underneath by Parkersburg as Tedrick controls. Tedrick to Moore. And Moore will take it to the front court for Parkersburg. 422 to play in the first half as Moore comes to the top of the key. To Brian Eddy, far side, firing from 25 feet, no good. Rebound, tipped around, picked up by St. Clair on the move. Into the front court, works on Moore, puts the shot up over him on the iron, no good. Rebound, picked off by Parkersburg as Jeff Eddy controls. Gives it to Ralph Moore and Moore will bring it to the front court for the Big Red. 24-16, Tigers up. There's Ralph Moore with the ball. To the right side, there's Jeff Eddy. Eddy looks underneath. Gives it back to Brian Eddy. Firing from the top of the key. Good. Parkersburg starting to hit from outside. Tigers have to come out of that zone. 24-18, Tigers up by six. And the Tigers want a timeout to check this one out. So it's 3.45 to play in the first half. Preston, 24. Parkersburg, 18. We'll be back right after this. 24 to 18, and Coach Metter, I'm sure a Coach Ball is telling us players, fellas, you got to keep a hand in their face. Right, they're going to have to pull out of that zone, uh, or that 2-1-2, two, two, that zone to three, and they may have to come out to a 1-2-2 a two, two to stop that perimeter shooting, or one, three, possibly one, a 1-3-1. One, they may even pull out to a man-to-man. I look for to man-to-man to see if they match up. With man-to-man. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, Princeton appears to be much quicker, much more aggressive than the Parkersburg team. So with 3.45 to play in the first half, Preston 24, Parkersburg 18, we're ready for action. As DeWitt will inbound at midcourt for the Tigers. Into St. Clair. Jeff puts it on the floor. Parkersburg into a 2-1-2 or 2-3 zone as DeWitt has the ball left side. Back to St. Clair. To Eads in the corner as Mike holds it overhead looking underneath. They can't get Miller open as Miller fighting his way in the lane. Now he'll fire out of the lane. Puts it on the glass. No good. Rebound pulled out by Moore. Uh, Parkersburg is more. will rebound it and bring it to the front court as St. Clair goes out to pick him up. 
as the Tigers move that zone out a little bit as, as Murray deflected for a shot, picked up by St. Clair, comes down, firing the lane, good. St. Clair hits it on the transition from 12 feet. 26-18. As the Tigers still into a what we got a semi zone, they pull that zone way outside, and now St. Clair knocks the ball away, picked up by the whip, but it's stolen back by Moore of Parkinsburg. Goes now, he'll fire. Good. As Moore gets the bucket back for Parkinsburg, 26 to 20. And St. Clair brings it to the front court now for Preston. Jeff to the top of the key to ease on the right side. Looks underneath, can't get anything open. They come back to the win on the near side. To ease on the far side, fakes the shot, goes to the baseline, fakes the shot, they time up. And Murray flips the ball back outside to the whip to St. Clair. Back to ease, firing out of the corner. It's on the iron. No good. Murray fighting for it in there. Miller picks it off. Goes under, lays it up. No good. Rebound pulled out by Parkersburg. And now, no whistle. Murray. Oh. Murray picked the ball up and it rolls off for there. St. Clair to ease in the corner right side. Holds it overhead. Looks back outside looking for Miller. Can't get him open. Gives it back to St. Clair. To the win on the near side. Back to St. Clair. He'll fire him the top of the key. Good. Boy, he just rammed it in there. 28 to 20, Tigers up. Jeff St. Clair has 11 points so far in the ball game. As Moore will work it to the front court, but St. Clair is going to put a little bit of pressure on him. He gives it to Brian Eddy on the far side, and Brian gives it right back to Moore. Moore gets it to the front court. And to Tiny Donahue in the corner, he gives it back outside to Moore. As the Tigers playing a real far spread out zone to wit, deflects Jeff Eddy's pass out of bounds. It'll be out to the big red on the far side. 28 20, Tigers up. Inbound pass comes into Moore. Ralph Moore on the dribble with it for Parkersburg. That right-hand dribble works his way toward the top of the key to Jeff Eddy in the corner. Trying to drop it underneath. They get it underneath to Tedrick. He has to give it back outside to Eddy, and they give it back out to Moore. As Moore way out front to the near side to Brian Eddy. Back to Moore, to Eddy. As the Tigers in a quasi-1-3-1 zone, moving it back and forth, and it's confusing Parkersburg a little bit. Now we've got Tedrick firing out of the corner. It is no good. Bob Moore put back up by Eddy. Good. Jeff Eddy puts it back up and in. For Parkersburg, 28-22. Tigers up by six as Jeff St. Clair brings it to the front court. To ease on the right side. And boy, they're really stacking his own around Miller right now. He's got three people around him. To wit with the ball. And he gives it back outside to St. Clair. As Ralph Ball shouting instructions, St. Clair looks over and hit him. Ralph says, bring him out of the zone. Stand out there. As Jeff holds him up, they come out of the zone. Now they start to move. He's into the corner with it. On the dribble. Moore playing a defense. As Eads works his way back outside, directing traffic inside. Goes to the lane. He'll fire out of the lane. It's on the iron. It's good. Mike Eads hits it 30 to 22. Tigers up with 39 seconds to play in the first half. As Ralph Moore moves it toward the front court to Jeff Betty. He's on the wing right side. Covers the ball up into the corner to Donahue. Donaway. Donaway firing out of the corner. Good. As Tiny Donaway hits it to bring the big red within six of the Tigers. 23 seconds on the clock as Jeff St. Clair brings it to the front court. To Eads on the right side. Mike holds it overhead, gives it back outside to St. Clair. He looks at the clock. 15 seconds on the clock. To Eads with 12 seconds on the clock. As Mike works toward the top of the key. Gives it to DeWitt. DeWitt on the near side with 7 seconds on the clock. Now DeWitt drives the lane. And we got a whistle and a foul. And it'll be on Jeff Eddy. And it'll put James DeWitt on the free throw line. That's number 2 on Jeff Eddy. Team foul number 4 on the big red. And it'll be Tiger Ball out of bounds. As he was not shooting, he was fouled on the drive. And getting off the bench and back into the game for Parkersburg will be Bill Jonas. Coming out will be Jeff Eddy with the two fouls. As DeWitt will inbound it. He gets it to Miller. Miller in the lane. Works it down the lane. We got a traveling call. As he was bumped pretty hard and knocked off balance. So now 30 to 24 with four seconds on the clock. Parkersburg will have the ball. As they put Jeff Eddy back into the ball game. And they're going to set up some kind of a long shot. And it'll probably be Eddy or taking it from somewhere around midcourt. Eddie being a former quarterback, probably the man to do it. As they bring it into Tedrick. Tedrick to Brian Eddie, firing from outside off the iron, no good. So at the end of the first half of play, it'll be Preston, 30. Parkersburg, 24. As in that second quarter, the Big Red got 14 points. By Park, while Preston got 13 points, and they outscored the Tigers by one. We'll be back with halftime right after this. And we welcome you to halftime activities at Parkersburg High School in Parkersburg, West Virginia, where the Preston Tigers enjoying a six-point advantage here at halftime, 30-24 to 24 over the Parkersburg Big Red. Preston in the first half had 17 points in the first quarter, 13 points in the second quarter for a halftime total of 30 points. In the Parkersburg, meanwhile, had 10 points in the first quarter, 14 in the second for a halftime total of 24 points. As we're getting stats ready, first... Before the stats, let's take 30 seconds for this okay. message. 
and we're back at uh, halftime. What did you tell me you just saw, brother? I believe it's Sammy Barker from the Princeton Police Department and uh, John's Barbershop. Uh, uh, I saw Terrian from uh, formerly from McDowell County. Free State of McDowell. Free State of McDowell. Let me mention real quick some of the people who are down here. Tom St. Clair, Nancy St. Clair, uh, Brenda Miller, they all made it, no problem. Mike Elmore, uh, we wanted to say hello to Sean St. Clair, Dream and Melissa, and uh, all of those people did make, make it to the ball game. In terms of statistics in the first half, scoring statistics, one thing that was stood out was that Princeton only was called for one foul. That was a charging foul against Mike Eads. Sean Donaway of Parksburg had one field goal for two points. Phil Jonas had two field goals for four points. Jeff Eddy had one field goal for two points. Ralph Moore had four field goals for eight points. Mike Eakin did not score. He was the starter. Brian Eddy, who came in, in the, late in the first quarter, had two field goals for four points. Tim Tedrick had one field goal for two points. And Tiny Donaway, who's 6'3", had one field goal for two points. They had 12 field goals in the first half. They did not go to the foul line in the first half, so they had 12 field goals for 24 points. For Princeton, Jimmy Miller had two field goals for four points. Mike, or Earl Eads, had four field goals for eight points. Jeff St. Clair, having an excellent night so far tonight, had uh, five field goals, one for one foul line, and 11 points. And, uh, by the way, the uh, sports writer from Bluefield gave uh, Jeff some notoriety. I'm not sure that that's very meaningful, but uh, he did mention that uh, Jeff St. Clair might be the best point guard in the area right now. James DeWitt had two field goals. He was one of one at the foul line for five points. Stephon Murray got one field goal for two points, giving Princeton 14 field goals, and two for two at the foul line for a total of 30 points in the first half. And do you have the uh, rebounding and turnover statistics? Uh, sure do. Team stat. Uh... Princeton shot 14 for 25 for a good 56%. Uh, had an excellent first quarter, much better shooting. Uh, but overall, a good first half, shooting 14 for 25. Parkersburg shot 12 for 24 for right on 50%. Princeton pulled down 13 rebounds as compared to 12 pulled down by Parkersburg. Princeton turned the ball over four times as compared to Seven turnovers by Parkersburg. Individual stats, Jimmy Miller shooting two for five this half for uh, Jeff St. Clair, shooting five for seven. Mike Eads shooting four for seven. James DeWitt, two for five. Stephon Murray is one for two. Tigers looking very poised and playing under control. Yes, they, they look very disciplined, uh, especially that first quarter. The shots were falling, getting... Good shot selection, good positioning on rebounds. Always had somebody under when they were taking shots. Running a, a fairly good fast break. Jeff St. Clair's had a couple of good layups off of some good picks set by his teammates. Seems to be playing good team ball tonight. Yeah, the thing we worry about more than anything else, due, with, due to the long trip, without, and you, wear, you wear, lose a certain amount of stamina on those kind of trips, are they going to wear out? They don't look tired. Uh, I do worry about the depth-wise tonight. Phil Harmon, as we mentioned earlier, does have a hurt thumb. He did get in the game very late in the half, just a couple of seconds in the half left. Uh, I asked him as he went by how his hand was feeling, and he said it still hurts. So whether or not he's in there still, if he does play, he's not going to be as effective. If he does not play, that's one player that Princeton does not have to go to. But now I guess... Uh, Really, it's some now. It was not a dislocation, but a badly sprained. Right, it's uh, very I sore, would say tough. by the end of the week, with ice, the whirlpool, exercises, and so forth, Bill Thumb will be ready to go back into action. It just happened yesterday, and a new injury like that is is difficult to play with. Well, right, it's uh, very touchy, and that thumb, or it sits out there on the side of the hand, you always get pressure from the side on it, and that sprain is. And I'm sure that as soon as it gets a bump a little bit, it's going to swell against the table. Sure. Uh, well, it'll swell, but there's, there's nothing really I don't think that hurts as badly as a, as a thumb. Your toes, fingers, and so forth hurt, but that thumb is just it sticks out there on the side. You don't realize how much you use it until you, until you have it hurt and have it out of position. I'm quite a carpenter, and one of the nails I can hit the ones on my thumb, and I usually put it in my mouth. Right, so if we see uh, Bill going up, way up in the air in a situation where he's not going for a rebound, we'll know that that, that thumb got hit. He just went airborne, huh? 
Uh, Mike, you, uh, you are, uh, what's your name? <laughs> Bob. You got, you got some information. We got a couple of people here we didn't give credit to a minute ago. Well, the first place, you, by calling me Mike, you reminded me of something, and that is that I said that Tom St. Clair's brother's name was Mike, and actually it's uh, Terry St. Clair, and he lives down uh, in the Virginia area, uh, and it's, it's Terry instead of Mike St. Clair. The cheerleaders that are here tonight are Vonzetta, Tanya, Tia, Carla, and I believe Carly, Lydia. Carly. Carly. Yeah. And I believe the fifth one is Lydia. Lydia Morgan. That's right, Don. Lydia Morgan. And so if their parents are listening, the cheerleaders all made it and uh, all safe and well. The, and uh, really, Bob, uh, I guess we should tell them the roads are in excellent shape up here. They're completely dry. Well, there's, we no, up. there's no snow on the uh, mountains even. It's, it's just as clear as it can be. It looks like two different... Uh, time zones or something. It's just a uh, world of difference uh, in the northern part of the state. There is no snow up here. Right. The uh, sun rested on my shoulder all the way up here. It felt so good. Cleared up my arthritis. And... Oh, you got arthritis? You're about that age, I guess. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. But the sun was out as we were coming up here. The, we turned the heaters off and some of the fellas laid back and relaxed and took a little sun bath. Was anybody in Hinton listening in tonight? Oh, yes. Always listening on the radio. They, they tuned it in and Sports Tigers from a distance. Let me mention a couple of people that are here tonight because it is a long trip, so there may be some people wondering. Nelson Kazee, who is the authoritarian at uh, John's Barbershop, said hello to John if he's listening tonight. Uh, Jimmy Mitchell is also here along with the uh, policeman that uh, you see downtown an awful lot on foot. That's uh, Sammy. Sammy. <laughs> Sammy Barker, he's here. So uh, Chris has a respectable turnout uh, at the ball game tonight given the... Uh, the distance from Princeton that the uh, ball game's been played. Well, it is a fur piece. So we drove it in about three hours and a half uh, driving time. And we got held up for a little bit on the turnpike. But uh, really coming around Charleston uh, with the uh, interstate system the way it is, you don't even hit a traffic light once you get off the toll booth. And you really don't get a traffic light until you get off and get into, into Parkersburg. That's right. Now, I thought we had... Uh, had uh, got into one of those uh, mazes that the uh, mice run through. When we got off of the interstate and started down this way, well, I thought we doubled back two or three times to get to the high school. But if you ever come down here, the, the, it's uh, uh, a really a nice high school, a nice gym, very elaborate facility. The football stadium is right behind the high school, and uh, all of the uh, high schools in Wood County use that stadium for their football. Now, you understand, Bob, what tax money can do to use properly during a conservative regime. Franklin Roosevelt was a oh, no, this regime. Was a, this is probably in Hoover's. <laughs> okay. Hey, we'll be back with more. First, let's ball 30 seconds for this. <laughs> and, uh, Ann or Bob, you had somebody else going to add that list of people up here. Well, uh, Dr. Jan Atkins did bring some of the cheerleaders up today, and, and they made it safe and sound. Dr. Atkins is up here. Okay, we're ready to start the second half. The Preston Tigers on top, 30 to 24. As the officials are on the floor, waiting on the Tigers, waiting on the Big Red. As the Big Red breaks the huddle, the title come out. The Tigers come out with Mike Eats, Stephon Murray, Jeff St. Clair, Jimmy Miller, and James DeWitt. And Parkersburg comes back with Phil Jonas, Brian Eddy, Jeff Eddy, Ralph Moore, and Tiny Donahue, I believe it is. Donahue it is. So it'll be Jonas to jump against Miller. Miller tips it to DeWitt, and DeWitt controls. He'll move it to the front court and leave it for St. Clair. Jeff takes it on the dribble. Tigers moving left to right as you look at the dial. To Eads on the wing, left side. Makes it underneath, gives it back outside to St. Clair, top of the key to Murray, and back to St. Clair. And now they go to the width on the right side of the wing. He moves toward the baseline, fires, moves it off the iron rebound, fought for, pulled down by Moore of Parkersburg. As Murray had a hand on it, couldn't hold it. Into the front court with it to Donaway. Drives, puts the shot up, no good, put back up and in by Brian Eddy. Brian Eddy. in for the, and I heard that too, I think it's over here. Brian Eddy puts it in to make it 30 to 26. Tigers up by four. As St. Clair to Eads. Eads goes toward the baseline. Holds it up. Gives it back to the width. Now outside to St. Clair to Miller on the right post. As the pass stolen away by Parkersburg as Donaway comes out there with it. Leaves it to Moore. And Moore takes it to the front court. Moore top of the key. To the left side to Donaway. Tigers into a 2-3 zone. Into the corner to Jeff Eddy. Back outside to Moore to Brian Eddy on the far side. And then he holds it up, looks for the high post, can't get anybody. To Donaway on the near side, the board, top of the key with it. He'll back it out, they'll set the offense again. Tigers in that 2-3 modified zone. As Brian Eddy with it on the wing. To Donaway, firing from the top of the key, off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound tipped out, controlled by St. Clair. And you may check that electrical connection down there. We're, we're hot, and if we get anything else, that'd be the first thing to check. 
So St. Clair takes it to the front court now on the dribble, and he'll draw him out. As he'll spin it out to try to make Parker's work back up and play man-to-man. To the left side, to DeWitt. DeWitt gives it back outside to St. Clair. And they spin it out again. As Ryan Eddy moves out, now they go to DeWitt on the wing left side. To Murray on the baseline. Step on. Throws it back outside to Jeff St. Clair, and they'll make him come out again. Now Parkersburg into a 1-3-1 zone. To E. Z's on the right side. Starts it toward the baseline. Now moves it toward the lane. Gives it back outside to Jeff St. Clair. He'll stand out there and make him come out again. They go to DeWitt on the wing left side. 30 to 26 Tigers up. St. Clair with the ball standing at the center circle. Starts it toward the top of the key. To E. Z drives the baseline. Gets in front. Tries to have it inside. The pass taken away. Stolen by Moore of Parkersburg. As Parkersburg brings it to the front court now on the offense. To Brian Eddy. Eddy on the wing. To Donaway. Top of the key. To Moore. Left side. Firing. Good. 30 to 28. As Parkersburg pulls it in to the Tigers. As he's in the front court with it for Preston now. To St. Clair. To the wind. Way outside on the wing. Left side. Back outside to St. Clair. The 1-3-1 zone for Parkersburg. As the wind with the ball. Drops it underneath to Stephon on the baseline. Stephon gives it to the E's in the corner. Fine, good. As E's from 20 feet away, drops it in deep in the corner. 32-28. Tigers up by four with 5.03 to play in the third quarter. And Ralph Moore brings it to the front court for Parkersburg. To the left side to Brian Eddy. Eddy looking underneath. Gives it back outside to Donaway. Throwing it for Moore. Throws it out of bounds far side. And they call it to the Tigers and... The tig- well, the Tigers may have deflected that ball, but they say Parkersburg threw it away. We'll take it. Yep, we'll take it, even though, hey, looks like we might have deflected it out of bounds. And we get uh, Osberger in the ball game for the Tigers, and Eve will get a chance to get a breather. As Osberger with the ball in front court with it now. To Miller on the high post, goes to the lane, fires from 15 feet, good. Is it as Jonas stopped him backwards, but the bucket went in anyway. 34-28, Tigers up by six. As Ralph Moore brings it to the front court for Parkersburg. Still on the dribble, the left-hand dribble, top of the key. To the right side to Brian Eddy. To Jonas, firing into Witt, got a piece of the ball, and Murray comes out of the crowd with it. To Hansbarger, to St. Clair, and St. Clair slows it down and moves it to the front court for Princeton. Takes it down the left side. Back outside with it to Hansbarger. John gives it back to St. Clair, across court. As Jeff works it down the left side to DeWitt. Trying to get it to Miller. Has a knock loose. Picked up by Parkersburg. It's Moore out in front with it running. As Hansberger cuts the ball. Four goes to the baseline. Gives it outside to Brian Eddy. Eddy holds it overhead. Gives it to Jeff Eddy inside. And Jeff lays it up and in. Jeff Eddy has the bucket for Parkersburg. 34-30. Tigers up by four. As St. Clair to Hansberger. John in the front court with it. Back to St. Clair. St. Clair fires. 14 feet. It's off the iron. No good. Rebound. Knock loose. Picked up by DeWitt for the Tigers. Outside to St. Clair. To DeWitt. To Osbarger, top the key with us. John holds it overhead, looks underneath now. Backs it out toward the center circle. To St. Clair, and he gives it right back to Osbarger, starts it down to Murray. Murray gives it back outside. As Osbarger looks around toward the bench to get some instructions, and now they're going to hold it and make Parkersburg come out of the zone. As Moore starts out to match up, goes back, and now he starts out again, very tentatively coming out. As Osbarger puts it on the dribble, gives it to St. Clair on the far side. As St. Clair starts it. Toward the corner, gives it to DeWitt. DeWitt gives it back outside to St. Clair. 34 to 30 as the Tigers into a delay game, looking for the ball, looking for the open shot on the baseline. As DeWitt with the ball, gives it to Osberger. Osberger, near side, front court, holds it overhead. To St. Clair, out near the time stripe. Starts it toward the lane, circles away, gives it back to Osberger. As John with the ball now, gives it to St. Clair. St. Clair starts it down the left side, goes into the lane, trying it for DeWitt, has it knocked out of bounds by Parkersburg. It's knocked out of bounds by Brian Eddy. It'll be Tiger ball on the baseline. DeWitt will inbound it. As he kicks it way outside to St. Clair. And Jeff spreads it out again. Comes way over to the near side. The Tigers in a quasi version of a four-corner offense. DeWitt with the ball down deep on the wing position right now. Gives it back outside to Hansbarger. Way outside the... Front, in the back court, now to St. Clair on the near side. Jeff starts it inside. They double team him, gives it to Osberger across court. To DeWitt. DeWitt in the corner, looks underneath, fakes the pass, tries to get it over to St. Clair, has it intercepted by Brian Eddy of Parkersburg. Eddy takes it to the front court. St. Clair plays the defense on him. In the corner to Donaway, firing out of the corner, throws the iron, no good. Rebound, fought for, and Miller saves it for the Tigers. Gives it to Osberger. Osberger on the dribble. Gets away from Jeff Eddy. Moves it to the front court. Holds it up. Looks for help now. 
Here's it for St. Clair, and the Parkersburg coach wants to trap and call very badly on that one. As Onsberger with the ball on the far side to DeWitt. Back to Onsberger. Onsberger on the dribble, comes towards the top of the key to St. Clair on the near side. St. Clair starts it towards the corner, comes back out of trouble to Onsberger. John holds it overhead, looks underneath to DeWitt. DeWitt on the wing, left side. Back outside to Onsberger. Onsberger comes to the near side to St. Clair, top of the... We're behind the back dribble, goes to Murray on the baseline, goes to the eighth fake, fires, no good, tips up by Miller, no good, Miller rebounds, puts it over top of Eddie, no good, he is fouled by Eddie, and Eddie and Miller really mixing it up, that's number three on Jeff Eddy, and that's team foul number one in the second half, and Miller goes to the line to shoot two, and we'll get Eads back into the ballgame for the Tigers. Son Donneray, Donaway comes back into the ballgame for Parkersburg, and Brian Eddy comes down, now we got two Donaways in there, Bob. It ain't fair. <laughs> we sure do. Jimmy Miller on the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll shoot two. He puts the first one up. It's no good. 34 to 30. The Tigers up by four with 114 to play in the third quarter. As Parkersburg coming in with Tim Tedrick right now. And Jeff Eddy will come out. As Jimmy Miller, a 75% free throw shooter on the season for the Tigers. He steps back to the line. He'll shoot one more. As Jimmy, ready to fire. It is good. 35-30. Tigers up by five now with a minute 14 to play, and the Tigers will press. As Donaway with the ball for Parkersburg, dribbling with it, moves it toward the front court, gets it into the front court to Tedrick. Tedrick goes into the lane. St. Clair hits him off. He circles out trouble, gives it outside to Ralph Moore. Moore will start the offense. He moves it to Tiny Donaway on the left side. To Son Donneray. To Moore into the corner. Gives it back to... Donaway in the lane, puts the shot up, no good. Rebound put up and in again by Tim. That was Donaway, tiny Donaway. 35-32 as Parkersburg pulls with him. Three of the Tigers with 39 seconds on the clock. He's with the ball for Princeton, firing out of the corner. Good. He's from 22 feet, puts it in. 37-32. Tigers up by five. We got 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. As four brings it to the front court for Parkersburg. Leaves it for Donaway. And this is Son. Donaway. He gives it back to Moore, back to Donaway as they play back and forth. They're waiting for the last shot. The Tigers in a 2 3 zone, patiently waiting for the red, big red to make her move. 11 seconds on the clock, and now Donaway starts to move with 7 seconds on the clock to Jonas. To Moore, firing from way outside. Good. Ralph Moore puts it down with 2 seconds on the clock, and Miller throws it to the last of the court and got a piece of Raptor with it. So at the end of the third quarter of play, Princeton 37, Parkersburg 34. And we'll be back with the fourth quarter first. So the Tigers leading 37-34 in that third fourth quarter. The Preston got seven points while Parkersburg got ten. And, Bob, that's uh, cutting into the lead a little more. Well, they led at halftime 30-24. Uh, to 24. They led by six. Preston had three field goals, one of two at the foul line, while uh, Parkersburg had five field goals. Preston went into a uh, uh, stall offense, and uh, and do you have the rebounding figures? Uh, Princeton is still out rebounding Parkersburg, but only by two. Princeton got five rebounds that time as compared to Parkersburg getting three. Okay, the Tigers come out with Jimmy Miller, Stephon Murray, James DeWitt, Mike East, and Jeff St. Clair. And it'll be Miller to jump against Bill Jonas. As Jonas and Miller, tip controlled by Parkersburg as Jeff Eddy grabs it. Hold it and gives it to Donaway. Donaway will start the offense now. On the dribble way outside as Princeton playing a spread out one, one, two, one, one, almost a one, three. It's a one, three, one zone, but they're very, very loose with it. As Donaway with the ball outside, gives it to Eddie on the far side. Eddie gives it back to Donaway. As Eddie looking underneath, moving back and forth now, picked up the dribble, gives it to Donaway. Donaway comes to the left side as Stephon cuts him off. They give it back to Jeff Eddy on the far side, and DeWitt cuts him off. They go to the baseline with it to Moore. Gives it back outside. Donaway side the key with it to Eddy. Into the baseline to Jonas. Puts the shot up and in. Bill Jonas puts it up and in for Parkersburg. They worked it well and got the bucket. 37-36. Tigers up by one now. St. Clair brings it back to the front court in a 1-3-1 one, one zone, but they've got Moore playing ease, man to man over the floor, looks like. So they got a 1-3 zone with a chaser. As DeWitt with the ball on the wing left side. Miller comes to the high post and takes the pass. Looks underneath, goes to the lane. Eddie bumps him off balance. He gives it back outside to St. Clair. As Jeff 
to DeWitt. DeWitt looks underneath now. He'll fire from 20 feet. Too strong. Off the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by Jeff Betty. Hands it over to Ralph Moore. And Parkersburg comes down slow with a chance to take the lead. As Donaway directing traffic, he ain't got it to the front court yet. Now he gets it into the front court to Tedrick. He gives it back to Donaway and to Eddie. Jeff Eddie with the ball. Leaves it for Donaway. Donaway way out front with it as a half court stripe as the Tigers double team him. He gets it underneath to Tedrick. Tedrick to Moore in the corner. Gives it to Jeff Eddie. And now they go to Jonas underneath. And Miller really hammers him. But that foul is on Jimmy. As Jimmy really hammers. Bill Jonas, that's number one on Bill. Team foul number one on the Tigers the second half. And we'll have Jonas on the free throw line to shoot two for Parkersburg. 37-36, pressing up by one with 6.13 to play in the ballgame. As Jonas fires the first free throw, it's good. He's a left-hander, and he put it in the net. And he'll have a second attempt. It's high ballgame right now. 37-37 as Jonas fires. It's on the iron. Good. And Parkersburg goes on top, 38-37. For the first time tonight, and now St. Clair brings it to the front court for Preston. To DeWitt, on the wing, left side. James looking underneath. Can't get anything open. To St. Clair, top of the key. Jeff looks underneath, back to DeWitt. Takes the shot, goes to the baseline. Now he'll fire off the baseline. It's good. He is fouled, and that'll be on Jeff Betty. It is on Jeff Betty, and it'll be five on, it'll be four on Jeff. And Preston wants a timeout. That's uh, two on the team foul number two. Team foul number two. Okay, Preston wants a timeout. But the Tigers went back on top, 39 to 38, but Miller had one free throw. So with timeout on the floor, let's take time in for this. 39-38, Tigers lead by one with 5.56 to play in the ball game, and Miller will have one free throw. And it's, it's getting kind of physical on Jimmy in that lane. Yes, it is. Now, uh, you caught me off guard. You might have something. Some maybe you might want to comment. I thought on the, the foul, I thought the foul was going to be on the... DeWitt would be a foul line, but it will be Jimmy. Wait, what? They're going to put Miller on the line. He's always going to put DeWitt on the line. DeWitt on the line. Okay. But uh, I've been watching the physical contact between Miller and Eddie all night. Have you been, anybody else been watching that? Or is that just well, a I've been watching it also. When, when Eddie brings that ball down, he has a tendency to wrap both arms around it and lower his shoulder just a little bit. It, it is getting a little bit. As the wet fires that free throw good, and the Tigers go on top by two, and they press now. The Moore with the ball on the far side. Back to Eddie, to Donaway. Donaway into the front court with it for Parkersburg as they break the press. Donaway goes down to the right side, into the corner. Backs it around, gives it back to Jeff Eddy, and he gives it right back to Donaway. Tigers into a 1-3-1 one, one zone, as Donaway with the ball outside, comes around the perimeter of the zone. Back to Eddie, Eddie on the right side of the key. Back to Donaway, to Moore in the quarter. Thank you, Andre, where they go inside to Jonas. We should have an offensive foul. He elbowed, he did. That's on Tiny Ted, on Tim Tedrick, and he really elbowed his way in. Offensive foul all the way. And on Tedrick, that is foul number one. And it'll be team foul number three on Parkersburg. And that turns it over to the Tigers. 40 to 38, Tigers up by two, and St. Clair will bring it to the front court for Princeton. As St. Clair comes toward the top of the key, he's directing traffic to DeWitt on the near side. DeWitt goes to the baseline with it, gives it back outside to St. Clair now. To DeWitt, to Eads, Eads goes to the left side. Gives it back outside to St. Clair, it's not loose by Moore. Moore into the front court with it, as St. Clair hits him all. Moore goes down and Miller over the rim to goal in. Inside the ball game, 40 to 40. As Ralph Moore putting the shot up at door, call for goaltending. 40 to 40, and the Tigers come to the offense. 505 to play in the ball game. I had that on uh, Bill Jonas, number 42. He says 24. All right. That's the number one. All right, one on Tedrick, team foul number four. So the Tigers have the ball out of bounds. Inbound to Eves, to St. Clair, top of the key. And St. Clair looks to the near side, goes back to Eves on the far side. To St. Clair, top of the key. He'll fire from 17 feet. Good. As he hammered it in off the back iron. 42 to 40, and the Tigers are up by two. As Ralph Moore in the backcourt to Donaway, into the front court with it. To Tedrick, Tedrick in the corner to Jonas. Jonas back outside to Donaway as the Tigers in a 1 3 1 zone. Jeff Eddy with the ball for Parkersburg right now. Leaves it for Donaway to come from come around behind him and pick it up. As Donaway gives it back to Eddie, he moves it toward the right side. To Donaway in the lane. To Moore, firing out of the corner. It's good. And Moore has just got the eyes out of the bucket out from outside all night. 42 to 42 with 405 to play in the ball game. St. Clair into the front court with it for Preston. To DeWitt in the corner right side. As James looks underneath, gives it back to St. Clair, to Eads on the left side. He'll fire from 20 feet, high arching shot, got it. And we got a whistle and a foul. And that may be on Bill Jonas. It is on Bill Jonas, that's number two on Jonas. 
And that's number five on the Parkersburg team. They let should put Miller on the line. As boy, they've been hammering on Miller in there. There have been a total of 12 fouls called in this game. Only two fouls called against Preston this ball game. Of course, it's been a very slow pace. To, I think it's been a very slow pace game. Right, Miller on the line to shoot a one on one. The Tigers with a two point lead with 351 to play. I believe this is the first 21 shot all night by the team. You're right. As Miller hits the first one, he'll have a second one. I think you're right, Ann. And now Parkersburg wants a timeout to talk it over. So with 3.51 to play in the ball game, Preston 45, Parkersburg 42. We'll be back right after this. Oui. And what was the comment you made about the ball game? I just said it, it seems kind of dry. It's been an interesting game, but it, it's been very slow paced. Uh, 3.51 left in the entire game, and that's the first time anybody's been on the line for a one and one. It just seems to, well, we, we haven't even been playing an hour. And, and we've got three minutes left to go in the game. That's right. Parkersburg pretty much control the tempo of the ball game on us, haven't they? Uh, I don't know. Princeton has wanted that slow down game. You know, they they only took five or six shots there that third quarter, and they did take a lot of those till very late in the quarter. That's true. They've tried to pull Parkersburg out of the zone. Right. All right, 351 to play. We'll have Jimmy on the line for one more for the Tigers. 45-42, Tigers on top. As Jimmy Miller on the line to shoot one. He fires. It's good. 46-42. Tigers up by four now, and they will press. As Eddie gets it inbound to Donaway. As they double-team Donaway, he gets it to Jeff Eddie. As Jeff on the dribble with it, picks his dribble up. Now he gets it to Donaway in the backcourt. Donaway gets it to Moore. Moore into the front court where they go toward the lane. To Jonas. Goes into the lane. The ball not loose. Picked up by Tedrick. Not loose. Picked up by Eddie. Not loose. Picked up by Smith. James to win. And... Moore almost sneaked in behind him as we had bodies flying through the air with the greatest of these. And I would like the walking call someplace in that man. Oh, it should have been, but well, you know that too. <laughs> so now James DeWitt in the front court with it for the Tigers. They go to Miller in the lane. He fires. Good. As Miller puts the Tigers up 48-42 with 3.13 to play on a fine pass from James DeWitt. As Donovan into the front court with it for Parkersburg. Stephon plays the defense on him. They leave it underneath to Jonas. To Moore on the near side. To Tedrick. Fires over Miller. No good. Rebound. Brought down by Jonas. Put up Miller. To rejects the shot on a fine block. And St. Clair comes out of the melee with it. St. Clair works his way out of the wrestling. Holds it into the front court for the Tigers. Still on the dribble with it. Now they go to DeWitt on the baseline as James brings it back away from the baseline. And he'll look underneath to set it up as Jeff Eddy plays the defense. They drop it to Miller on the baseline. Goes on and puts it up on the hand and dick Jeff Eddy. And oh, we have got the Parkersburg bench is coming up. And he'll whistle no call on it. We and as Miller really decks, Miller really decks him. Miller really decks Jeff Eddy. And I mean, he absolutely decked him. There was no doubt about it, was there? No, it looked like a charge to me. And he did. He, he, he laid the ball well, upside the head. He walked in pretty good. Of course. Of course, on the other side, Jeff Eddie's a big, strong kid, and he doesn't go down all that easy. Well, that's true, but now Miller's been, he just getting even, probably, but he really decked him. He really put him on the floor and then jumped on top of him. Didn't you see it, Ann? I sure did see it. You didn't see what we saw? <laughs> I sure did see what you saw. Uh, I was just noticing down here, it looks like Jeff Eddie's hurt. That's what I was watching. This. Well, now, that's Jeff Eddie's little brother jumped off the bench and almost went on the floor right there. Number 20, uh came off. Right, and that's his cousin, and I... Oh, his cousin, and I, Jeff was on the floor. Miller fell on top of him, and Miller's elbow hit Jeff upside the head and, and banged him into the floor a little more. I think they're rubbing the side of Jeff's head down there right now. we got 228 left to play in the ball game. Tigers out now on top by a 50-42 to 42 score. As the Tiger cheerleaders swooping it up out of center court. And, of course, they've got their chaperone up here behind us. What's his name? Uh, Charles Wright. Is that, is that who you're referring to? Okay. Dream, dream is up. And we put, Char we put Charles in one of the stat sheets here tonight. All right. Parkersburg ready to go. They inbounded. Moore with the ball. Gets it to the front court. Leaves it for Donaway. Donaway goes down the left side. Gives it back to Moore. To the other Donaway on the far side. Tony gives it back outside to Spawn. To Moore. Moore goes to the baseline left side. The Witt plays the defense on him. Gives it back outside to Donaway. Back to Moore. Fakes the shot. Now he does fire. Tony Iron no good, tipped up, wants no good, rebound, pulled out by Murray of the Tigers. Gets it out to Eads, as Mike Eads bounces it twice, gives it to St. Clair, and St. Clair in the front court to DeWitt. DeWitt skips his way toward the baseline, comes back outside with fancy ball handing to Eads. Eads to St. Clair, as the Tigers spread it up. Eads, Eads drives underneath, goes underneath, he is hammered underneath by Tedrick, no call. Parkersburg comes out with the ball, out 
to Dalloway. Dalloway into the front court to the other Dalloway and Miller. Go over to Holt in the gig hand. And Dalloway high up in the air to put the shot up. And when he put the shot up, Miller was right up there chipping that on away. 50 to 44, and we'll get John Hopper in the ball game for the Tigers. And Murray will get a chance to catch a breather. A minute 40 to play in the ball game. Tigers lead 50 to 44. Parkersburg will press. As James DeWitt beats the press, bring it to the front court. They try to double feed him. We got a traveling call. It'll be up to the Parkersburg Big Red. They'll have it in the back court. And we get Stephon Murray coming into the ball game. And Hogberger comes back out. Donaway will end up it. He gets it into Don Donaway. Donaway. Donaway will dribble toward the front court far side. Leaves it for Moore. Ralph Moore way out front with him. Tigers in a 1 3 1 zone. As Moore gives it to Donaway near side. Throws it down the left side. In the corner to Tiny Donaway. Back outside to Donaway. And they go to Moore. Moore goes toward the side of the lane, left side. Gives it back to Donaway. Into the lane. Fires. No good. Rebound pulled down underneath. Put it up and in. Good by Jonas. Jonas hits it for Parkersburg and pulls him within four. A minute five to play. St. Clair in the backcourt. He is fouled by Tom by Donaway. And off Tom Donaway, it is foul number one. Team foul number six on Parkersburg. It'll put St. Clair on the line for the Tigers to shoot a one and one. And St. Clair, an 86% free throw shooter on the season. Goes to the line for the Tigers. we got a minute, two seconds to play in the ballgame. Preston 50, Parkersburg 46. As we'll get Jeff Betty back into the ballgame for the Parkersburg team after the free throw. St. Clair fires. It is good. He'll have a second attempt. And now Jeff Betty comes back into the ballgame for Princeton. And we'll get Tiny Donaway out of the ballgame for Parkersburg. That's he went in for Princeton. He's going in. As Jeff Betty goes in. And now the Tigers going, are they calling for a timeout or a technical? And now uh, they've given the ball to Jeff St. Clair. How do you call a timeout? He had the ball in his hand. And they said it's Princeton timeout. So with 102 to play, Preston 51, Parkersburg 46, let's pause for this message. Uh, was not the one who allowed the timeout, but the official didn't see, the other official didn't see the ball handed to him and right. called the timeout. Well, well the timeout was called from the bench anyway, that's not allowed either. It's How about the ball? Hey, give me Miller called the timeout. I'm going to ask Andy explain all that to us one of these days. <laughs> There have been a lot of calls up here tonight. A couple of calls in that JV game, a technical call. That's Wood County rules. Must be. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank They're like the Bath County. They have a few rules there, right? That's right. St. Clair on the line for the Tigers. Tigers lead by five. St. Clair fires. It's on the iron and good. 52 to 46. A minute two to play. Parkersburg with the ball. Ralph Moore on the far side. Brings it to the front court. Gives it to Tiny Donaway. And he gives it to Bill Jonas. Hey, Jonas. To Moore in the corner. They drop it underneath to Tech to Tech Frederick and Frederick puts the shot up, but DeWitt takes it away from him. Gets it out finally to St. Clair in traffic. St. Clair works his way around Frederick into the front court to James DeWitt. DeWitt gives it back to St. Clair. And St. Clair, double team. Gets it to E's underneath. He goes under, puts it up. No good. Tips up once. He pulls it down again. Frank, we got a scramble on the floor. Oh, and he goes out ball. to Parkersburg and Cedric into the front court with it. In the board, the front court, and Miller rejects the shot. Takes it away from him. And now they lose it out of bounds. It's Princeton ball. And it's Princeton ball. And uh, they're just with Donaway. Donaway must have a call on that. Donaway must hit that ball. I don't understand all that I see here. <laughs> we got 21 seconds to play. The last four game. minutes of this ball game, there's been a total absence of officiating. Preston's ahead, 52-46. As DeWitt with the ball. Oh, and they, call, they call a traveling call on DeWitt as they went around round four. And it'll be Parker's ball, ball out of bounds on half this court. What's that word you used a while ago for what Jimmy Miller did to uh, Jeff Eddy? Hammered him? <laughs> Walked him upside the head. 52-46. Tigers on top. Four with the ball for Parker's first bag from 20 feet. It's on the iron. No good. Rebound. Put up by Donaway. Blocked by DeWitt. Pulled out by DeWitt. By E. The St. Clair out to E. E. Fouled in the backcourt. E. Fouled by Bill Jonas. That's number three on Jonas. <laughs> As DeWitt made a fine block on the shot, St. Clair comes scrambling out there with it. Fed the ball to E. And E. was fouled as he worked his way toward the front court. Six seconds to play in the ball game now. Preston on top, 52 to 46. As Mikey's on the line, he'll shoot a one and one. As Mike is ready, he puts it up with the right hand. It's in and out, no good. Rebound pulled out by Parkersburg. Lead pass out to Donaway. Into the front court. He'll fire from 17 feet. Good. 
at the buzzer. That bucket will count. So the final score is the Preston Tigers, 52. The Parkersburg Big Red, 48. As in that fourth quarter, Parkersburg got 14 points. The Tigers got 15 points and end up winning the ball game by four, 52 to 48. We'll be back right after this. We as Jeff St. Clair comes flying off the floor toward the dressing room, coming right by Ann Better. He punches Ann to say hello to my little brother. Is it, is it John? Right, I said we Jeff already said hello. hello to John, but we'll say it one more time. Okay, final score of the ball game tonight. Preston, 52. Parkersburg, 48. Preston put together four quarters of 17, 13, 7, and 15. For a total of 52 points. Parkersburg with 10 points, 14 points, 10 points, and 14 points for a total of 48. Final score, Preston, 52. Parkersburg, 48. We'll be back with that first split balls for this. As the Tigers take their record out to 10 and 4 on the season with a 52 to 48 victory over Parkersburg here at Parkersburg on a long road trip for a Tuesday night. And uh, I'm sure that the Tigers will have a very much nicer trip home now if they get the victory under their belt. The Tigers in action again this Friday night at Oak Hill where they'll be up there to take on the Oak Hill Red Devils. And Oak Hill just knocked off the number one team in the state the other night when they took Greenbrier East to pass. And then Saturday night, Huntington comes to Princeton. The Huntington Pony Express will be at the Princeton High School Gym Days in this Saturday night. We'd like to see you in Oak Hill. We'd like to see you at Princeton. Come out and join us. The Tigers jumping on top, 17-10 at the end of the first quarter. And they were outscored by one point in the second quarter, so the halftime advantage was 30-24 Princeton. The Big Red came back and outscored the Tigers 10 to 7 in the third quarter. So at the end of the three quarters of play, it was Preston 37, Parkersburg 34. And in the final quarter, Preston put 15 points on the board. Parkersburg 14. Final score, Preston 52, Parkersburg 48. As Bob is ready with some individual stats. Okay, first for the Parkersburg Big Red, uh, St. Don Donaway had three field goals for six points, two of those coming in the fourth quarter. Bill Jonas had four field goals, two of two at the foul line. The only foul shot that Parkersburg had in the game for 10 points. Jeff Eddy, the football quarterback, is a junior and, and probably will be playing Princeton next year in football at quarterback, had two field goals for four points. Ralph Moore, who did a lot of the damage for Parkersburg, had eight field goals for 16 points. Mike Eakin, who started, did not score. Brian Eddy came in, hit three field goals for six points. Tim Tedrick had one field goal for two points, and Tiny Donaway had two field goals for four points, giving them 23 field goals and only two of two at the foul line for a total of 48 points. For Princeton, Jimmy Miller was off his 23-point scoring average. He had five field goals. He was three of four at the foul line for a total of 13 points on the game. Mike Eads played a good, consistent ball game. He had two field goals in every quarter except the last. He only had one in that one. He had seven field goals. He was 0 of 1 at the foul line for 14 points. Jeff St. Clair had six field goals. He was 3 of 3 at the foul line and 15 points on the game. He was the high scorer with Miller 13 and uh, Eve Smith 13, 14, and St. Clair with 15. Bill Harmon, who has the injured thumb, did not score in the ball game and was only in there for just a couple of minutes. James DeWitt had three field goals. He was 2 of 2 at the foul line for eight points. Stephon Murray had the one field goal in the first half of the second quarter for two points, giving Princeton 22 field goals and 8 of 10 at the foul line. 8 of 10, that's 80%, I can figure that, 52 points on the night. And Ann, what do you got on team set? Team set, Glenn, uh, Princeton only put up 15 shots that second half, making 8 of those shots for 53%. Parkersburg put up the ball 26 times, scoring on 11 of those shots for a 42%. Uh, about even on rebounding, or in fact, they were even on, in the rebounding column that second half. Both teams pulling down 10 rebounds. Princeton turning the ball over six times as compared to Parkersburg turning the ball over two times. Uh, stats on, for the game, Princeton shot the ball 40 times, scoring on 22 of those, making 55% of their shots as compared to Parkersburg shooting the ball 50 times, scoring on 23 of those shots for a 46% mark. Uh, Princeton out-rebounded Parkersburg by one rebound, getting 23 rebounds as compared to 22 rebounds by the Parkersburg team. Princeton turned the ball over 10 times as compared to nine, uh, nine turnovers by the Parkersburg Big Reds. Big difference, shooting percentage. 
Sure, big difference. Uh, Parkersburg shot the ball ten more times than Princeton did, made one more field goal than Princeton was able to come up with. So the Tigers hitting 55% from, from the field for the game. And right. uh, eight out of ten from the free throw line. Right. Not a bad night. No, it's not. And the Tigers go ten and four on the season now. That's not a bad uh, worksheet. No, it's day. not. Uh, not bad at all, considering the experience I came into the season with, coupled with the very tough schedule that Princeton played. I think the Princeton fans should be extremely proud. And uh, of course, the the Tigers working very hard, but very hard. Parkersburg came out with a completely different game plan in the second half, and they were able to eat into the Tigers lead and actually came up and took a lead uh, at one time and uh, the Tigers were able to keep their poise and fight back and I guess that's a sign of the team maturing. Sure. Uh, as we saw early in the season, a couple of times when the lead changed hands, Princeton did lose that poise but now they're coming into their own. They're gaining a lot of confidence with whatever it is they go out there. They, uh, we've seen Princeton run. We've seen Princeton play a modified delay game and tonight I feel like that third quarter, we saw Princeton delay that ball just about as much as they can. Uh, and in all of those situations, whether running, whether sitting on the ball, no matter what they've attempted to do every game, they seem to gain a tremendous amount of poise, a tremendous amount of confidence. They seem to have confidence in each other and confidence with the game plan that they go out there to play. Of course, now, Friday night, they've got to go to Oak Hill. Oak Hill just beat Greenbrier East. Greenbrier East rated number one in the state and handily defeated the Tigers some... Uh, 78 to 60 uh, about uh, 12 days ago over at Fair Lake, and Oak Hill has a lot of team speed, uh, moves the ball real well. Right, and uh, Oak Hill also has that sixth player on their team right now, Bo Benham. They are, they're playing excellent ball coming down the stretch, hopefully for Coach Jim Lilly and for Oak Hill. They got that 400 win tonight for him, so they won't be playing for that on Friday night. That would be an they added. They don't need anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, they don't need, they don't need an added, in, added incentive to beat Princeton. They like to beat Princeton any time, any place, and they don't need win number 400 for the coach or anything like that to motivate them to play a little bit tough. That's right. Bob, you've got uh, something you want to add? Well, we, uh, I want to say hello to uh, George and Jennifer Harmon. When I said hello to them before, I, I didn't know Jennifer's, uh, didn't remember Jennifer's name, but I want to say a special hello to Jennifer because uh, my son Aaron thinks she's about the cutest little girl in Princeton. Well, my, son, right. my son's 19 months old. And uh, after Oak Hill on Friday night, on Saturday night, Huntington comes to Princeton. And Huntington, of course, beat Princeton by some 11 points. or um, uh, We look way back and they said uh, some uh, 13, 13 points, points back on January 9th. So Saturday night, Princeton will be playing Huntington at the high school. Okay, we expect everybody to be at Oak Hill with us on Friday night. And when Huntington comes to town Saturday night, I'm Glenn Bay, and I'm speaking on behalf of that better. And Bob Graham, <laughs> who's been here with us. And Bob's my traveling companion here tonight. He goes to sleep when he drives. <laughs> no, I just set that cruise control and sort of uh, take it easy. Oh, if you're singing, I can't stand. I knew there was something that was bothering me. And we tell you once again, the Tigers victorious, 52-48. to 48. Tigers lost the JV game up here tonight, 79-48. to 48, But they came back to win the varsity, 52-48, to 48, to make it really, to put that season record at 10-4 and 4 with momentum going. They go to Oak Hill Friday night. Huntington coming in on Saturday night, and then three big games next week when we have Pineville Tuesday night, Mount View Wednesday night, and North Fork on Friday night. So get out and help us support the Tigers and see if we can get these guys rolling right on back up the state. I'm Glenn May speaking on behalf of Ann and Bob saying we appreciate the fact that you've allowed us to be a part of your evening. Back to the matter is we say thanks so much for listening. Good night, all.